my painting friends. Welcome to this week's painting demonstration. Today I'm painting in acrylic. I'm using a 10 by 14 canvas paper and as you can see I've used a grey background and I've used that with the Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue mix I usually make for a grey. I'm using this charcoal pencil to get this drawing in. Try to get the necessary angles in. And for the background I want to do a dry brush technique so I'm just taking the excess paint off of the paintbrush there and uh, a lighter grey so that's my burnt umber, meal trim blue and some white. It's more towards the blue than the brown or you can push it between the more of a blue tone or more of a brown tone or indeed a neutral. A little bit more white going in on there. I just want to make sure that I'm getting everything that all the necessary angles in so I'm just going in again get that cheek in and you can rub out <laughs> which is great. Getting in the dark, so I've got um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber again with no white at all. This is a good way of mapping in all the necessary darks. It's not really um, very precise at this point, it's close to, close to is, is good enough at this point. I'm using quite a large filbert brush, going a shade lighter now and a shade lighter again. So I'm just adding a little bit more titanium white. I'm using a flicking motion, releasing the pressure as I finish the flick of the brush. The flow of the paint will actually depend on how wet your brush is, how your brush holds onto water as well. Um, the environment that you're working in. So if it's slightly dry or cold um, it might not be such an easy flow so you might need to add more water. But I find that these filbert brushes hold on to quite a lot of water actually because they are used for um, all sorts of different applications such as watercolour then uh, it's not really it may not actually do what you want it to do but in general generally they they tend to be okay these filbert brushes I'm using here I am going in with a yellow ochre mix and I've mixed up a an ultramarine blue and um, a cad red light to make a purple and then I've added that to my yellow ochre just to darken it down a tad and whilst this yellow ochre mix is still wet I'm adding some more white this is an even more grayed down yellow I've had a lot more whites for the pouches, so I'm not really sure what they're called. <laughs> I 
getting in the ears now. And you know what? I didn't like the shape of that ear, so I decided just to add a little bit of white and to scrub that out. I didn't mind it dissolving into the background. Here I am trying again. And adding my blue grey mix with um, plenty of white for the background. Just to tidy it up. Going in again with my darks. And now I'm going in with my lights. All the colours that I use are in the description box below and you can see here I'm using sap green and a touch of yellow ochre and some raw umber. Here I go in with a bit of yellow ochre with some white. I want to define that eye a little bit more. But this time, because I want it a tad darker, I am using a mix of Mars Black and Ultramarine Blue. You may have noticed um, my filbert brush is a little bit smaller now. When I'm wanting to do a little bit more detail, then I will go down to a smaller brush. Okay, so I decided to use a magenta and I've toned it down with the sap green just to give it a little hint of a pink in the ears there. My yellow ochre is clumping up a little bit here. It started to dry out on the palette so I'm trying to incorporate that into the paint and just to take a little bit off there. Okay, so this is day two, and uh, this is a great opportunity to make your corrections. And I'm using my charcoal pencil. Well, it's a pastel pencil, but it's in white, as you can see. And because I've left it a day, I can see where I'm going a little bit better, get the angles more into their correct positions. This is a yellow ochre mix, greyed down again with my purple. It does look quite light on here but I think my light actually makes that bright white stand out and it's actually not as bright in real life. I 
I'm using my flat brush there, which is fine. I alternate sometimes between filbert and flats. I've had a little bit of raw umber here, I'm redefining that line again on the eye. I'm using my blue grey mix and some white for the lighter hair and now I'm redefining the shape of the forehead there with my burnt umber and ultramarine blue mix. Very often I'll go dark to light, dark to light again, dark to light. Um, if I feel that I need to redefine some of the darker areas, I'll go dark. I want to transition the darkest bit of the of the cat on the left there. So I'm using a mid-tone blue grey to transition between the chest hair and the outer edges of the cat. got in really close here for the eye and my phone has readjusted and has uh, has blown out those whites <laughs> quite significantly um, you can see by the color of my hand that it's really really bright using a Mars Black and Ultramarine Blue mix for the pupils. A little bit of white with the sap green. I decided to use some cad yellow medium with a little bit of white. I will link the reference image in the description box below and uh, if you take a look at the eyes you can see quite a bit of yellow which gives the eye some wonderful definition.
I'm using my detail brush here and I'm dabbing away at the yellow. It gives it a mottled effect which I love. bringing back some of those mid-tone greys to the side of the face. And taking out the extra fur that I don't really want with a dry brush technique. some raw umber back in there Some more fur texture. As I'm going along, I'm observing whether I need a lighter grey or a darker grey. Adjusting that nose. A little bit of time lapse now. I believe I was using my blue grey mix for the whites of the face and down the right side of the fur, but um, I found that a little bit stark, so later on I do actually go over it with a bit of raw umber. Some raw umber underneath the chin to help in the transition. Some yellow ochre and some raw umber there on the face. Going lighter. You know, I can't really remember what I did for that colour, but I think it was yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Hmm, <laughs> yeah, I'll go for that. <laughs> Here we are on the chest again, going really light this time. I'm using the grade yellow mix with lots and lots of whites and taking it across 
onto the other parts of the onto the other parts of the cap there. And here we are on day three. I have marked out a correction that needed to be made to that eye because believe me that eye was bugging me the majority of this painting <laughs> and uh, I really needed to correct that so um, yeah and I'm adding some more yellow ochre and some sap green give that eye a little bit more of a punch readjusting the pupil of the eye let's get these ears done so I'm outlining them where they need to be in white well in a, a very pale yellow and although the fur in the ears look quite bright once they dry they do dull down a little bit Bringing the yellow on the forehead there down with some raw umber. Bringing the whites back, which is not pure white of course. Working on the left side of the face there. Adding some more raw ember. really working the forehead there the longer you look at an image the more you see and at this point I was going all over the place and uh, eventually you're gonna have to sort of like say that's enough is enough <laughs> but no I keep going <laughs> and uh, here we are on the ear again I decided to have a coffee break and um, so after having a bit of a break I concentrated on the front using my finger to smudge the ends there to help in the transition because I don't want any hard lines where I 
start the brush stroke. Decided to go in with a little bit of raw umber and a touch of ultramarine blue just to redefine some markings on the chest there. And you know these little final touches are very, can be very subtle, but because I know I've made them, that makes me happy. <laughs> As you can see, I attempted to make um, some whiskers there, and I was using a detail brush. Um, I simply just, before it dried, I washed it away with um, some water and uh, dabbed at it with a towel. Right, now I'm using a rigger brush and it's really giving me a nice, a nice stroke, much better. Here I am going with the black whiskers. You never know what you're going to get when you make these strokes, but just go with the flow and um, it's all very expressive and I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I want to redefine that nose a little bit. Please like and subscribe, that will really support me, thank you. And if you're so inclined, you can make a contribution on Buy Me A Coffee, the links are in the description below. Thank you for watching.